305 days. 305 days to go to Christmas. You know what? I know already how the Christmas presents under my family's Christmas tree will look like. And I'm not a clairvoyant, but as long as I can remember, the presents are wrapped in the same used Christmas paper. At my parents' house, there is a huge box full of used wrapping paper. And this comes along with a huge box full of matching ribbons, which are used continually. And I have not finished the boxes yet, because till now, till the present day, there are boxes full of used zippers and buttons, which were removed from old clothes. And I still remember separating the buttons by its color and shape. In my childhood, I thought that's the normal way of living. I did not realize that this is a way of sustainable living and this is um, a way to waste prevention. And to be honest with you, I was annoyed by wearing the clothes from my siblings and from my cousins. I was annoyed by eating potatoes, cabbage and apples the whole winter long because they, were, they grew on our farm and it was their season. I had my first slice of, an, um, of a watermelon at the age of 15. And don't ask me when I had my first avocado. <laughs> Nevertheless, now I know that this, these little things, and I just mentioned some examples, shaped my life from the beginning. The influence of my upbringing is the reason for where I am now. I mean the position in life, my opinions, the topics I'm edit uh, dedicated to and enthusiastic about, and the job I am doing. I am working and teaching at the FH, at the FH Uneum, University of Applied Science. I am a designer and my research field is about social and sustainable design. Originally, I studied design and product management and did my first internship in a packaging design company. Followed by some years at the app development startup and my study program of exhibition design. All of these were very focused, all these steps were very focused on products and materials. And today, I will talk about my experience, my results and goals about how designers can have a positive influence to our life. I get inspired by motivated people, by people who are passionate, who are eager to find new solutions, and people who care about the environment. Through my research work, I had the great opportunity to attend twice a conference in Detroit. And there I met so many fantastic people who inspired me in different ways. And that not only the people who inspired me, also the city, a whole bustling town. I'm not sure if you know the story about Detroit. Years ago, it was the motor city with two million inhabitants. Because of the car industry, we moved to low-wage countries without records to the employees and to the economy, the city went bankrupt. So two-thirds of the inhabitants left the city which causes 78,000 abandoned houses. But the people who stayed, they are really motivated to make the city livable again. I met many, many uh, startups, and there especially the creative scene is having, a, is having a big impact to a better life there. Out of necessity, for example, some groups of designers are collecting wood wood boards from abandoned houses. Another group is collecting plastic containers. And both of them, they are doing new furniture out of it. So on the one side, they are doing urban mining, which means they are getting their resources, their raw materials for products out of the city. 
on the other hand, they are doing upcycling design. And upcycling brings me now to my master thesis, which actually turned my life around. A colleague and I, we did a shop concept and a branding for an upcycling store. To get more information about the rather new topic of upcycling, we visited a lot of second-hand shops, reuse conferences, dumps and waste disposal sites. This opened my eyes. I got a really deep insight on the, on the environmental pollution and I was shocked about all the waste we are producing. At the same time, I was fascinated about all the great upcycling products. Let me explain the term upcycling with this graphic. Most of you will know how to, to, uh, to recycle materials, so like glass, cardboard and paper and metal are the typical materials to recycle and they can, used in a, uh, they can be used continually and that is really great. But sometimes recycling, in the recycling process, the material loses quality, so then you're speaking from downcycling. And upcycling is the opposite. Upcycling means to make a new product with a higher value and a higher quality than the original one. So upcycling gives an unwanted item a better purpose and a second life. Probably the most famous product on the market are the bags from Freitag, which are done by Trucks Canvas. Upcycling is a great opportunity, but shouldn't we take a look on the real problems on the, at the question of material and the production process? This brings me back 15 years. During my studies in Salzburg, I got to know the idea of a circular economy. Inspired by nature, the circular economy concept has the approach to use 100% of the product again. So take a look on the graphic. The biological circle in which 100% of the materials return to the nature, and as, for example, as a compost, and can be used for new biodegradable products. In the technical bi uh, circle, the products get disassembled and the raw material is used for new products. So what an amazing concept. If you think about it, it will mean that all the waste will be dismissed. But I always ask myself the question, do we really need all these products? The 10,000 possessions we Europeans have on an average are way too much. It is unbelievable, but it is a fact. As a daily base, I am searching for new sustainable ways of living. I am searching for projects all around the world. I follow a lot of crowdfunding platforms. I think I'm kind of addicted to all these news. I try to tell friends and to tell on conferences and at the university about all these great projects. In general, you will barely, you will barely meet me in supermarkets or shopping malls, because I try to consume as less as possible and to produce minimal waste. I try to buy fair trade and organic products, packaging free, seasonal, local and directly from the producer. There is a study which says on an average that a drilling machine is only in use eight minutes in its life. So not everybody has to possess one. The things, the items I owe, I try to share. For example, on our letterbox in our house, I put stickers with products on it, which I can lend my neighbors. And there are so many more initiatives like flea markets, fair tiler, open bookshelves, second hand shops, which I'm using. And it is our decision and our choice, which products we need and which products we buy. And this makes an influence, this has an influence on the economy and forces companies to make a change. And why I'm doing all of this? Why, it is, why is it so important for me? 
Of course, it influences my health, my life, the whole society and the whole environment. For a long time, I focused on how I, as a designer, can have a positive influence on waste prevention. Because most of the time, designers are already in the beginning of the product development. So we have a chance to, uh, make, a cho uh, to make a choice to influence the choice of materials and the manufacturing process. And a lot of times, we are acting as a link from, engineer, from engineers all the way to the target group. So first, there is sustainable design. And second, there is also social design. Designers become involved more and more in social movements and support grassroots initiatives to improve the world. Social design has a, has a positive influence on the society and the economy. So the aim is to improve the world and doing both taking care on society and the environment is called design activism. Design activism counts, counts projects under, among others, for unattended groups of society, for violations of human rights, for climate change and, for example, for fake news. So design activism has a positive influence in, and is dealing with, with the topics social, environmental and economic. The topic is not new. I got really inspired by Viktor Papanek, who developed a tin, out of a radio out of an old tin in the 70s for African countries. So he made out of uh, waste a new product, plus he developed a radio to, to enhance the life in Africa. Designers for the Real World, a book written by him, and a lot of other papers about design for good, design for need, design for all, and uh, written by engineers, craftsmen, architects and designers, who always played a very important role in our life. Now the topic is up to date again, because of the economic growth, the lack of resources and the increase of population, which has a really a serious impact on our life. But traveling around the world, meeting designers, architects, activists and managers keeps me quite optimistic. I got to know a lot of really great uh, projects about design activism. For example, a Detroit fashion designer developed a coat which can be turned into a sleeping bag for homeless people. Among other materials, the sleeping bag is done by upcycled automotive um, products, automotive insulation. Yeah. Then, since internet and social media, it has never been so easy and so cheap to spread your ideas around the world. Like an, an Israeli graphic designer who did a poster against an upcoming war in 2012. As you can see, it shows him and his daughter holding an Israeli flag with the following claim. Iranians, we will never bomb your country. We love you. His message, the political message of one private person, got rival around the world. Or I'm sure everybody knows about the list with the richest, with the hundred richest people in the world. To strengthen the awareness of the inequality in our society, a group of designers did the project called Bottom 100 a list with the poorest 100 people in our society. Let me show you one more example. The Italian designer Enzo Mari developed a series of easily assembled furniture made out of raw, solid wood and nails as a protest against the mass production and the consumer good industry. Years later, the project also turned into a social project because the company Kukula in Berlin got the rights to build and to sell the furniture. Because of that, 
five African refugees could stay and work in Germany. I visited the company uh, Kukula in Berlin, and once a year they are doing workshops and lectures with our students. The way most of us are living is not future oriented. More precisely, I mean the way how we use the resources, the way how we produce, and the way how we consume. My message for you. If you have not started now, take the chance for and, and start living a more social and a more sustainable life. Do not postpone it. Start right now and take the challenge. And please, don't understand, uh, understand me correctly. It's not only the designers who can make a change. Designers are doing design activism, but everybody, every, all, uh, every one of you, each of you, with your expertise in any field, can have an influence on our life. But of course, we cannot do everything 100% correctly, like living 100% sustainable or only doing um, socially, uh, socially good projects. But um, I believe it is all about to strengthen the awareness that all our things we are doing have an influence of all the people. Every day, positive as well as negative. It is about the commitment to ourselves and to our values. Imagine if all the products are 100% recyclable and or biodegradable, and all the producers are living under fair conditions. That would be great. Let's come to the end of my talk. That design activism has a big power is beyond dispute. Any place you go, designers are, are dealing or questioning the same topic. How can we change the world? I believe that design should be able to shape whole environments and societies. Although I have been working some years now in the field of social and sustainable design, I still feel like I'm just getting started. From a product manager to a designer doing upcycling projects and now design activism. It is always a process and changes need some time. For the future, I will go on supporting social and sustainable projects in order to spread the word about design activism. Bringing my two professions together by doing an exhibition about design activism is also on my agenda. So please, take the challenge and be part of the social and sustainable movement. It will have an impact on you and me. Thank you.